Hey, I'm Takara Sullivan. Welcome to the Frizz Free Method. Today, I'm going to share my technique with you on how to eliminate texture at your root. I truly believe that this is the most important part of the Frizz Free Method. So if you learn nothing else, learn how to eliminate the frizz at your root. If you follow Jasmine Ray and you do her hair training, then I want you to know that the frizz free method and hair training go hand in hand. This is going to help keep your hair healthy. It's going to help it grow. Depending on how long your wash cycle is, whether you're washing once a week, once every two weeks, once every three days, whatever it is, when you're hair training, we are only applying heat to our hair day one. You're letting your hair have a break for those days and you're not getting any frizz or any texture or anything else kicking back up if you start and you really build this foundation and do it correctly. So let's get started. I just washed my hair and then I wrapped it up in a microfiber towel. It is really important to use a microfiber towel because the fibers in this towel are so much more gentle on your hair. It's not gonna cause damage, it's not gonna cause breakage, it helps retain moisture, and that is one thing that is really important. You don't want your hair to be dry and poofy when you start this. You want it to be a little damp, but not sopping wet. And the reason why is as your hair dries, the curl pattern, the wave, the texture sets, and it is a lot harder to get it out of there once it's dry. All right, let's go in and put in some products. So it's really important that we put on some sort of heat protectant. Um, before you brush out your strands, you should have some sort of uh, detangler or leave-in conditioner. And so I always recommend Davines Oi All-in-One Milk. Um, this one has a heat protectant. It is a leave-in conditioner. It's a really, really fine spray. So it's not gonna weigh your hair down. And so you can spray it all over. I love this stuff so now we have the product in our hair we're going to go back to the rock and ruddle and brush it through to evenly distribute it throughout your hair the rock and ruddle is a dupe for the mason pearson brush the mason pearson retails for 250 dollars <laughs> i don't know about you but i could never justify spending 250 dollars on a brush the other thing that I really like that it does that the Mason Pearson doesn't do is you can pull out the bristles easily. This lets you clean. It lets you deep clean in there. So that's gonna make your brush last longer. If you get product built up back here or inside of here at all, it's just easy to remove it. It's easy to put it back. Um, it's way less than half the cost of the $250 Mason Pearson. So yeah. Rock and rattle all the way. Okay, let's talk blow dryers because this is so important. I highly encourage you to invest in a professional quality blow dryer. It doesn't have to be the Gamma, but I recommend that it is a professional tool, okay? Professional tools are more powerful. They are going to get your hair drier faster, which equates to less heat, which is less damage and so all around better. I'm going to give you the pros and cons of the Gamma. This back, if you can see, you have to clean this. There, you can see a little bit of light. But that's also what makes this blow dryer great is that it is bladeless, meaning if you look at a traditional blow dryer, you can kind of see in the back, it has like a fan looking thing. So this is bladeless. It sucks up a lot of air really, really fast. And so it's able to dry very quickly, very efficient. The one thing that was a deal breaker for us at the salon, because we did carry the Gamma when they first came out, is that this looks like it is metal. It is not, I'm assuming, because it's cheaper to use plastic. We had a few incidences where um, we accidentally dropped the blow dryer. And if you are not careful with this and you drop it, this ring will snap in half. It takes a long time for them to replace this ring. So that has been the number one deal breaker why we got rid of them. Once this ring breaks, you can't attach this filter to the back. When you can't attach the filter to the back, this sucks up so much air that dust accumulates, you get that lint, and then it burns out your dryer. 
So you have to have this in order to not burn out the dryer. Ours started acting up and malfunctioning once we broke this and we were waiting for the new one. But at the salon, we blow dry a lot of clients every day. And so we just didn't have the time to wait on a new ring. So we ended up getting rid of them. The positive about the Gamma, which is why I love it. It dries so fast. It's really, really powerful. It is super lightweight, which is so nice when you have a lot of hair to not be drying it with a really, really heavy dryer. I just love how lightweight and compact this thing is. Also the neck of the blow dryer. I have always learned how to round brush with the neck of a blow dryer. And so a lot of people have asked, why don't I use the Dyson? I think the Dyson is great. I think it is very speedy. It's bladeless also. It's a very cool design, but it's personal preference. This one for me, I like because I use the neck of the blow dryer to help me round brush. You need to have a concentrator nozzle. This is not an option. Uh, whatever blow dryer you have, you have to have this concentrator attachment in order to do the frizz free method. So not an option. And I love this one because it is so wide. The dryer that I recommend to you is the Lee Stylist from Launch. It is the exact same concept. The concentrator nozzle is a little bit smaller in the first generation. This is more durable back here. So all around it is, it's the same, but upgraded, I would say from this. The only difference is this has a locking feature, which I really, really like. The first generation of the Lee Stylist does not. And so sometimes you can push the buttons in the front and change the settings. And why I recommend the Lounge Lee Stylist to you is because of the price point. This blow dryer is $399, 400 bucks after taxes. The Lee Stylist is half that, I think. So here's the con. The Lee Stylist launched and they sold out really, really fast because it was such a great price point and it is so comparable to the Gamma. And after they sold out, Lounge has not restocked them yet. I know that they are working on it and I promise as soon as it comes out, I will share that with you. I also understand that it is really frustrating for me to share something with you that's $400 and that's out of stock. So I have been looking on Amazon and I have found a couple that look comparable. I don't know though the longevity, how long they're going to last you. I don't know efficiency, if it's similar to these. All I've done is read reviews, and so I will link those also in case you wanna get it right now. But I'm going to give you options. So it's really up to you to research and see if it's worth the wait for launch to launch the next generation, or if it's worth it to get the Gamma, or if you wanna try out one of the Amazon ones, okay? Let's get started on getting rid of your frizzy roots. I went ahead and ran the rock and ruddle through my hair um, one last time to pull out all of the curl and wave pattern. We're gonna start at the root. We're not gonna use a brush, you're just gonna use your hands and your fingers. I found that this is the easiest way to pull tension and enough of it so that we're straightening out that hairline. So right now, we're not worried about getting rid of frizz. We're worried about getting rid of curl and texture. Your hair can be poofy and frizzy after this, and that is right on. But if it has a lot of curl and wave pattern to it, then you didn't pull enough texture. <laughs> this is why having the directional nozzle is so important. What we're going to do is take your fingers and pull tight tension. So if it's just like this, that's not enough. See how when I pull it, you can see that my hair pulls my scalp back a little bit. It shouldn't hurt and it shouldn't be uncomfortable, but you should be able to notice and feel that you're pulling tension. So what you're going to do is pull and then take your nozzle and you're going to lie it against your hair like this, okay? You're not gonna put it in because that will burn you and that will hurt even if you go fast, okay? And that will also, anytime that you block the air filtration coming out of your blow dryer, it goes back in and it's heating this up and it's going to overheat your motor and burn your motor out. All right, let's get started. I'll show you what it looks like. I'm going to mute this because this is loud. I left this clip in normal one time speed so that you can see how fast I do each pass along my hairline to my mids.
You can see that I elevate my mids off of my scalp and this is just to make sure that airflow is passing through my hair and also so that I am not burning my scalp. I do about two passes total so that I end where I started and your hair does not have to be completely dry because in this next portion I'm going to show you how we completely dry the root and mids. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this in sections and we're going to blow dry it opposite of where your part is. So if you part on the side, all of this hair is going to be flipped up and over and you're going to blow dry it this way and then all of this will be this way. I like to blow dry mine just down the center so that I can flip it on either direction and it'll have a lot of body and volume because we are trying to eliminate frizz and texture, but you still want to have a lot of body at your root. You don't want to lose that. You don't want to have flat roots. So we're going to start at the top here. And the reason why we're doing this is because this is going in and this is shutting down the cuticle and smoothing out the hair. The tension is helping so that you don't have any curl left in it and the heat is helping smooth it. This is going to help with flyaways too. Um, instead of just blowing your hair dry all crazy like this, um, you'll get a lot of flyaways, you'll get a lot of frizz that way. Uh, this is shutting down that cuticle. We'll start right here. You can use a clip if you need. This is um, from Jess Halleck's Ensemble line. It's a gator clip. They have really great grip and really good stain power, but they do not pull on the hair. All right, so we're gonna take a section, about an inch, I would say. You're gonna pull tight tension. You can brush it out first if you need. Um, you can hold it like this in a fist. You can hold it with your fingers through it, whatever you prefer, whichever way is easier. I'm just gonna hold a fist. I'm gonna start right at the root. Make sure your blow dryer is on high heat. If you have it on medium or cool, it's not going to be as effective at getting the curl pattern out. You're gonna start at the root and you can see I do a few passes there and then I move on to the mids and do a few passes here. However, I am not drying ends yet because that is what we are grasping onto to pull texture and if you try to go to your ends, you're going to burn your hand. So give me a minute and I will show you a little trick on how to tackle your ends. Okay, I want you to notice this little wiggle movement that I do with my blow dryer at the root. My hair is now dry. Dry hair heats up a lot faster than wet hair. I'm going to explain this more in depth, but basically this is to avoid me burning my scalp. So I just wanted you to watch what I'm doing and see that I'm throwing that little wiggle in right there. It's also important to note that I am gliding the blow dryer from the root to the mids. I am not gliding it from the mids back up to the root. The reason for this is we are sealing down that cuticle by going down the hair strand. You don't want to open it back up and cause it to be raised because that causes breakage and frizz and damage. So you are only gliding root to mid and then picking it up root to mid again. One thing that I forgot to say beforehand, but what I was doing as I was drying my hair is when I'm holding my hair going this way, you'll notice that I start, it's called bumping the root. So I rock my hand a little bit. Um, and that's because my hair is starting to get drier. So when your hair is really, really wet, when you're first doing the hair line, you can push this right up against it and it's not gonna burn your scalp, but the heat penetrates and gets to your scalp faster because your hair is already dry, so it's heating your hair up more, and there's potential to burn your scalp. So instead of sticking it straight on here, right at the scalp, I'll bump it a little bit, and then that heats it up enough, and I'm pushing it in the right direction and pulling enough tension to where I rock my wrist, bump the hairline, and then I come out and then push, I actually do push the nozzle against my hair, but not flat in like this. There's still room to let that heat escape, but it is being pushed into the hair. And then another thing that you'll notice is I never go like this back and forth because we're trying to smooth that hairline down. We're trying to smooth the cuticle and shut it with the heat. And so you just want to go nice and slow about this speed along your hair. I'm doing the same thing over here. I did cut it down a little bit so that you don't have to watch the whole section. Hopefully by now you're kind of understanding the whole process of this. I'm gonna clip those bangs up and out of my face. This is where if you have shorter pieces, one of those gator clips really comes in handy. 
The biggest thing that I've changed over here is now I'm pulling tension with my right hand and I have the blow dryer in my left hand and that's really the most challenging part. Okay, my hair is starting to dry on the ends and so I really want to get in there and try to smooth out. It's mainly just frizz now, so I'm not super worried about it, but there is still a little wave in texture, so I'd like to get in there and try to smooth it out with a brush. If you pull tension down here with your hand and you go through with your hair dryer, you are going to burn your hand and that is not gonna be a good time. So I recommend using a boar bristle brush. I do use a different one than the rock and rattle for this part, and here's why. I use the flat from Jess Halleck's Ensemble line. You can tell the difference in the nylon tips, okay? This one has balls on the end and they're a little bit bigger and the way that the um, boar bristles are are a little bit different. They're spread out a little bit more and so this one is more dense. I feel like it is easier for me to get my frizzy mess into this and then those nylon tips with the balls hold on to my hair a little bit better. Whereas this one detangles, this one holds on and it does my frizz free ends like a dream. Let's cut this down so that it's not such an overwhelming section. Then you're gonna insert this and make sure that it is really in there. You can see the nylon tips coming through. Your hair is being pulled, okay? We're gonna go parallel with the blow dryer like this to your hair strand. We're not going to go like this because that is going to burn out your motor and burn your brush. We don't want that. I wanted to keep this clip true to speed so that you can accurately see how fast I'm gliding along that hair strand. It's really slow and this is enabling those boar bristles to heat up so that they can really smooth the ends. I'm going to use the neck of the blow dryer to help maneuver the hair strand back into the flat. And you can see that I'm slightly turning the flat brush down and that is because I don't have my other hand to pull tension. So by rotating the flat brush down just a little bit, it is helping me pull tension. You also notice that I put the blow dryer underneath my arm. It takes about 20 seconds after you turn this thing off for it to warm back up. And that is just a safety mechanism that the Gamma and the Lee Stylist have. It's a good thing because then your motor does not overheat. However, it is kind of a pain when you're doing large sections to turn it off and have to wait for it to heat up every time. You need to be cautious though because this thing gets really, really hot. So if you're putting that under your armpit and you don't have some sort of sleeve protecting your arm and your armpit, you might burn yourself and it hurts really bad. And then you might drop your gamma if you get the gamma and that's really bad because like I said earlier, it's a very delicate machine. So I recommend putting it on your countertop or somewhere where you know that it is not going to fall off and break. When I insert the flat into the mids of my hair, you can see that I'm just slightly rotating it down. But as I get closer to the ends, I'm really rotating it so that the bristles are almost parallel to the floor. And that's helping me pull more tension. The ends get a lot finer, and so you just have to twist it in order to keep them in there nice and tight. You can also see that as I am rotating that brush, it's adding curl a slight bevel to my ends, which looks really nice, and it gives you a lot of body and volume. If you don't like this look, don't worry. It's not permanent. We're just trying to get the wave out and we're trying to smooth it right now. And we'll fix that with step two when we round brush. Okay, easy as that. So what we're gonna do next is section out this much hair at the crown, okay? And we're going to take it bit by bit. I like to brush this part out because I'm elevating it and it gets a little tangly and I want it to be as straight as possible. So we're gonna elevate this and over direct it forward. We're going to blow dry it from the underneath and blow dry it forward. Um, exactly like how we did this, we blow dried these in the opposite direction of how they will lay. So this will give you body and volume. I'm taking the same thickness in section, which is about an inch width. And you'll see that I'm doing the exact same thing. Starting at the root, going to the mid, ending with the flat on the ends. And I did cut these clips down so that they're not so long, but you still get the idea of the way that I section and dry every portion of the back of my head.
I break the crown up into three sections and I wanted to turn around so that I can show you how I eliminate frizz at the root from the back. So this section is not straight by any means, but I am going to brush it up and take out as much texture as I can with my brush. And you can see that this is a very large section. So my concentrator nozzle obviously is not big enough to do this whole section at once. So you can see that I am bumping the root and then splitting this into three different passes. And I'm just doing that over and over again until the roots and mids are dry. And then exactly like those other two sections, I am inserting the flat so that I can smooth those ends. Next, what you're gonna notice is that I am using the flat to brush all of my hair in one direction. So very similar to the front hairline, you're just gonna pull tension and this is how you're going to smooth the back hairline. Then you're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side and underneath. Next, I'm going to take about a one and a half inch section from the bottom hairline, and then I'm going to clip up the middle hair. This is one of two ways that you can blow dry the roots at the back of your head. If it's comfortable for you to hold your blow dryer like this and angle your wrist in this position, then I suggest doing it this way. However, that is pretty difficult for me, so what I prefer is splitting the hair in half, and then I will take my blow dryer and blow the hair sideways. Holding it this way is just a lot easier for me and it doesn't put as much tension and strain on my wrist, but I encourage you to try both ways and see which one works the best for you. You only have to do about two sections sideways because remember we already blow dried the hairline, so that is already straight. So go in and do the same thing on the other side. All right. I don't know why I decided to do this because this was not comfortable and this is not what I usually do. Um, I decided to go in and blow dry left handed <laughs> and then I realized that when I do the back I usually always hold the blow dryer in my right hand and work from the right side to the left. I was probably just overthinking because I'm doing a video for you. I'm going to clip that front section up along with the over-directed crown portion, and then I'm going to split the back of my hair in half and pull one half forward on this side. Then I'm going to do what I've done on all the rest of the sections, inserting the flat into my mids, going really, really slowly down the hair strand and smoothing it out to the ends, slightly rotating the flat so that it pulls tension and doing that as many passes as I need to make all of the texture go away. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the other half of the back hair. I went ahead and just cut down the clips because you already saw it on the left side. All right, that was step one of the frizz free method, eliminating frizz and texture at your roots. How did you do? First things before I get into this, if your hair does not look like mine and you still have a lot of curl and you still have a lot of texture in there, I want you to know that that is okay. We're practicing, we're learning. I don't want you to get discouraged. I want you to keep trying. Don't go wet your hair down and do it again. We can tame it with the next two steps. So don't go back and try to do this again. I just want you to know that the goal at what we're working at is to have frizz-free roots, no texture, a frizzy and texture-free hairline, and as smooth and straight as possible, okay? But if yours does not look like this on your first try, mine didn't either. I've been doing it for years. Do not, please do not get discouraged. I would love to see how this turned out for you. So I am very active over on Instagram. Um, so shoot me a DM over there. I would love to see how it worked for you. Hopefully this was helpful and I'll see you soon in video number two, how to round brush your hair.